Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Lowry at Home. I'm your host, Naturalist Kirk. Yesterday was Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Thank you for everything you do. I'm kind of thinking maybe we forgot one last year, though. Did anyone get anything from Mother Nature? Because she got us something this year. She got us a polar vortex in May. Thanks, Mom. It's 41 degrees out. It's going to be 80 next week, but no, 41. It's refreshing. I'll give you that. Tell you what, on today's show, we've got something special for you. We've got naturalist Lauren, who's going to give us a behind-the-scenes tour of the animal care area at Lowry, a place the public doesn't usually get to go. So you get a special behind-the-scenes look. Take it away, Lauren. Hey, everybody. It's naturalist Lauren, and today we're going behind the scenes to see how Lowry Nature Center takes care of its education animals. A lot of our visitors, when they come to visit the Nature Center, really love seeing our animals, and this is typically the view that they get. They see this sort of large wooden wall with different tanks and animals moving around in them, and then we also have a couple on our countertop over by the window. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go behind the wall so you can see what it looks like in the back, behind the tanks. It's not too far of a walk. We're gonna head out into the lobby area, but then we're gonna take a very sharp turn past the fireplace to a wall that is normally shut. The door is locked and it says staff only, but today you're with me, so we're gonna take a closer look. Ta-da! Now, this is where all the animal care happens, and it's a pretty small space, but it works for our needs. Right away, you'll notice we have a variety of animal tanks. Some are currently in use and some are empty, waiting for the next new arrival. Last year, we had a green frog who spent the summer with us, but it's been uh, released and is back in the wild. Uh, we've got a variety of insects. We've got our crickets and our cockroaches. Those are specifically used to feed some of our reptiles and amphibians. Most importantly, we've got our animal log. So anytime we come in to do work with our animals, we can open this log and we can record what's happening. How much did they eat? Who fed them? Did you change their water? Did you fluff their substrate? Did anybody poop? Because that happens. All kinds of fun notes. And because multiple people take care of the animals, this is how we can keep in communication with each other, especially during this time when we're not necessarily in the building at the same time. We've got our digital thermometer. We've got our mister. So the, it's like an afternoon rain every time we do animal care. We've got some chemicals that are friendly to the animals but will allow us to clean their tanks, especially their feeding tanks, which we keep up here. Everybody has a label on their tank so that we know who's in which one so we're not mixing and matching. Most of our animals have some sort of light, whether that's in one of these sort of structures or, if you've never noticed, under the toads and salamanders we've got these light strips that suffices for their light needs. We also have things like extra furniture, like rocks and bark. Over here we've got more of that. We've got deer antlers, we've got some sphagnum moss, all kinds of things to keep things interesting for our animals so that they're not getting bored. You know, sometimes we like to rearrange our rooms. Animals like that too. One thing I wanted to share with you today is it's the first week of May, which is when we typically weigh our animals. So we are gonna go and try to weigh our painted turtle. His name is Picasso. So let's go get him. All right, so we went and got Picasso, and now he's in his bucket, and he's ready to get weighed. So what we need to do is we need to turn on our scale. Our animals are weighed in grams. That's the unit of measurement we use. And we're going to be using this clear container. But the big thing is when I put the container on top, I'm going to have to zero out our scale because we don't want to include the weight of the container with our animals, because otherwise Picasso is going to have got, gained a lot of weight in a little amount of time. So now, you may notice that he likes to wiggle when I pick him up. Something that turtles do in the wild is if something picks them up, they wiggle and squirm as much as they can to hopefully get that thing to let go. He'll do that here, but normally he'll calm down a bit, at least enough for me to get the number. We'll see. Here we go. All right, buddy. Here we go. Squirm, squirm, squirm. Alright, we're gonna set him down. Picasso, sit still. 243! 
Way to go, bud. All right, so he's gonna go back in the water. I need a rag to dry my hands real quick. Woohoo! Gonna dry those off. And then we record our data on this chart. So we said 243. It's the month of May. This is Picasso. 243 grams. Oh, and he's lost a little bit of weight. Well, lucky for him, it's Thursday, which means it's feeding day. So we're gonna get some food for him. Now, on Thursdays, our animals also get calcium because that's gonna supplement their vitamins and nutrients. So we'll turn this off, and I can go over there. This is where we keep our little calcium powder. Now we can put things like his little turtle pellets in there. Couple turtle pellets, maybe a little, a little bit of shrimp. Mm -hmm. And he's a big fan of crickets, live crickets, so we'll see if we can give him some crickets. But for now, shake those up coat them in a little bit of powder, and toss them in. What? What? There's food, don't you see? There you go. Mm -hmm. So we tried to do a mix of dry food and live food. One of his absolute favorites is actually minnows. And we're getting to the point where we can go outside and claim them or we'll buy them from bait shops, whatever works. But today we're going to get some crickets, so let's see if I can just nab a few with my hand. There's one. Mm. There's two. Alright, we got two live crickets. We're going to swirl them around in our, in our calcium powder. And then they're going to go in the water with Picasso the turtle. Now we get to watch. Chomp. <laughs> oh, the cricket's fighting back. Oh, oh no. Oh, we got him. <laughs> okay, so Picasso has finished eating. He's been put back in his home. I finished writing down anything I needed to in the animal care log. And I think it's time for us to head on out and check on some of the other animals. And to do that, we're gonna take the trap door. A lot of people don't know that we have a secret door, so let's head on out and see what the others are up to. All right, let's see here. I noticed right away, Vixen, our fox snake, is poking holes. She's digging tunnels through her substrate right now, and she looks kinda goofy. Hi, Vixen. Let's see, Houdini, the tree frog. Yep, as usual, he is high up hanging out, living that tree frog life. We've got Scooter, the snapping turtle. Hi, Scooter. He's always coming to say hi. He's looking to see what's going on. He's one that we're really happy we've been taking his weight. He's almost doubled in size in a matter of months. It's amazing what happens when baby turtles decide to get bigger. We've got our American toads, Shrek and Fiona. There's Fiona living that toad life. And Shrek, as always, in his potted plant. Keep in mind, though, the plant hasn't been there forever because somebody keeps digging through the soil. Are the salamanders out today? Oh, I see them both. We've got Digit as the big one and Dart, our little guy. Yay, Dart. Let's swing over here. We've got Toro, our bull snake. He's snoozing. And, of course... Picasso, the turtle of the hour. There he is, happy and fed. Hi, buddy. Thank you, everybody, for coming along. We hope you enjoyed your behind-the-scenes look at our animal care. Uh, there's never a dull moment with animal care. There's always something keeping you on your toes, but we do our very best, especially during these strange times. We've had our staff coming in separately to take care of our animals, which has been awesome. Normally, we rely heavily on this really great crew of animal care volunteers. They come help with feedings, and they help with handling and cleaning and things like that. We haven't been able to see them lately, and we really miss them. We hope to see them again soon, um, but... You know, with all, with all things animal, we hope that you enjoyed what you saw, and we hope we'll get to have you back here at the Nature Center soon. Until then, we're sending it back to Kirk. 
See everybody. Thank you, Lauren. That was really cool to see behind the scenes. I also want to thank all of you. You have really stepped up to our challenge of trying to get us to 100 YouTube subscribers on our brand new channel by the end of the week. We are so close. We are at 83 subscribers as of this morning. We just need 17 more of you to click on that link in the comments of today's show and you can subscribe. And once we get to 100, that'll unlock some new features for us so we can do some fun things for you guys over on our YouTube channel. You can also hop over there and check out all of our past episodes. Thanks so much for tuning in today, and we'll see you all here tomorrow for more Lowry at Home.